That's cool. Yeah, it looks like you've got it down after, what is, what is this, 51 episodes? This is my brother. My brother from another mother. This is uh, number 59. And we are live, motherfucker. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, this is, dude, this is uh, f- episode 59 already. Uh, it's, it's, it's been it's been a quite a few. It's been yeah, it looks a like you've got it down after. Yeah, I got it. Was 51 I, episode? Saying, I saw the one you this did is with uh, my Andy brother. And my brother from my other mother. Been, I feel this like is, I've been uh, in a cage for years. And we are live. I would have loved to, to watch all of these. I started uh, Vitalis. I wanted to see Vol- Vitalis and Ash Thorps. And now I've got a ton of stuff that I can listen to while I work. It's, it's like a treasure trove. So I'm really excited for that. Yeah, there we go uh yeah i'm happy you know it's it, there was there's been quite a few guests and by the way i just had my my uh my stream unmuted so people could hear echoing <laughs> like 30 30 second echoing but it's all good where it's fixed uh but yeah dude it's it's been a while i started this um almost two years ago a little more than that yeah and it's just been like on and off for most of the time uh you know it's usually when i just have time to do it um this year i've just promised myself i just want to grow this channel a little more you know um just just uh reach out to as many people as i can and and get really interesting folks on there's quite a few really interesting names that are aligned it's just a matter of now getting um you know getting it scheduled Mm -hmm. and uh we'll see how it goes i mean i eventually would like to branch out this channel to not just concept art and entertainment but really something more you know there's just so much more going on in art in art in general whether it's industrial design or illustration or i don't know even makeup artists you know that's 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 something that is intriguing to me uh personally yeah. i had one set designer uh scott schneider i think you, you you know scott or you might have worked with him before um i think he will or maybe not i don't know um i guess I get tucked away in dark corners and <laughs> generate JPEGs all day, so I don't get to meet a lot of cool people. The work does. The work the work I do meets more interesting people than I actually get to, but it's uh, right. it's still fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. I'm actually gonna try to get your camera on the camera here. We'll see if it works. But um let's maybe start with um with this little idea where <laughs> Let's just maybe talk about yourself a little bit, you know, who you are and, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Let's let's introduce you because I know, I, you know, a lot of people that are here, they already know who who you are. Uh, majority of the people that joined the stream live, they they are aware who Jared Moranz is, but but there might be some people that never met you before, never heard about you. So it would be nice to know. It would be nice to know. Yeah. Okay. Um. My name is Jared Morantz. Uh, I've been designing uh, for the film game and television industries now for about 20 years, which is which is a very long time. Um, I started off very early. I started off around uh, age 14, and I was working for low-budget practical effects houses. And of course, I wasn't designing exactly. I was I was uh, helping out and sweeping and uh, learning whatever I could, but I was very fortunate to have that opportunity and to um, figure out the industry. I did a little bit through high school, uh, a little bit of cats, a little bit of, of sculpture here and there, and then uh, a little bit through college as well. And then when I, I graduated from uh, Art Center in 2005, uh, I started working uh, the following week for Stan Winston's, which is now uh, legacy effects, and I've just been bouncing around from um, practical effects house to practical effects house. Did a few visual effects houses, and then uh, now I'm in the union. And so I work directly uh, for the clients. I've spent a lot of time um, over at uh, Marvel, uh, Fox, Sony. Um, I just I just jump around, you know, gun for hire, like you, sir. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, you've been you've been around for a while. I think uh, wh- when exactly did you start? Like, what was the um, what year did you end up working in the industry? Well, it depends. Um, if you were to start the very beginning, 
uh, I believe, I'm not sure if I have a credit, but I know I have a crew shirt from a film uh, called Halloween Town that I did for Soda Effects when I was 14 years old. Uh, and I just assisted. I actually think I was more uh, trouble than I was. I was helpful in all honesty, but I, I learned a lot. So you could count that. Um, uh, but after college, that's when things really started to kick. I ended up working on um, a few things over at uh, Stan Winston's. I got to work on Avatar briefly. I got to work on wow my first film very briefly. Very briefly. Uh, <laughs> I got to work on um, my very first film with them was uh, it was a low budget film called The Deaths of Ian Stone and uh, they hired me as a um, it was like a sketch artist and I spent the majority of you know my first couple of years uh, on a drafting table you know when I graduated from Art Center uh, they taught me how to draw and how to paint I had already spent a long time learning how to uh, how to sculpt. Um, but Stan, um, my mom, my dad were never really sure that I'd actually be able to, uh, make anything out of myself. Like, you know, getting into art center that didn't really, uh, comfort them. But then when I got my, my right. first job, they were, they were comforted. Um, and so, yeah, at Stan's strictly pencil, paper, drafting table. Um, just coming up with stuff and then, you know, having it refined and resolved by very talented artists and sculptors. Um, same thing when I was at uh, The Sims Company for years, it was just drafting table, you know, like maybe two years. And then I realized that uh, I wanted to take things further. I didn't want to just hand it off. And so I picked up Photoshop and I picked up uh, 3D. And now... You know, signatures stay on the work, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a chance to work together on a couple of projects now. Uh, I think the first one, and we, we kind of discussed discussed it briefly um, before this call was Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Um, you were, and you were, with, you were with ILM? I was with MPC. Uh, MPC. I was actually, it was during the time when I came back to Poland uh, for about a year. Uh, I was here at U in U.S. between 2010 and 2012, and then I went back for like a whole year. Um, and during that time, I actually ended up working on the Guardians. Uh, you were at uh, Marvel, right? You were yeah, Marvel? That, was the, that was the first show uh, I did with Marvel. Okay. And I was working on, um, where was I? I was actually I was working in house at uh, a, an incredible studio called Ironhead. And they do they do a lot of superhero suits, and I was working on uh, Amazing Spider-Man two, uh, and it was I was there briefly. I learned a lot, and then uh, I got a call for Guardians of the Galaxy, which I was aware of. I was aware of that project, of that property, um, but I didn't I didn't really know it. And so at first, I was I was very nervous because I kind of thought they'd call me for Iron Man or something <laughs> like that, or Captain America, and you know. We, if you're familiar with my portfolio, I'm not that guy. And I definitely, I definitely wasn't that guy back then. Um, yeah. But, you know, fortunately, you know, it's a big alien movie and uh, there is stuff for me to do. But when you're in-house at Marvel, um, it, it, it changes things uh, quite a bit. Like um, you could, you could work on a show outside of the studio and, um, I've I've been fortunate enough to feel valuable <laughs> on on projects, mm -hmm. and when you go in house to work at Marvel, the only thing you want is just not to be the weakest link because the talent is is incredible. Fortunately, everyone's also insanely nice and kind, and um, you know I got to work with uh, Ryan Miner being Charlie when. Andy Park, uh, my buddy Anthony Francisco was actually starting the same time uh, I did. Kevin Chen, Josh Herman, like uh, right. Jackson Z, like the list goes on. You know, um, and uh, fortunately, I wasn't the weakest link, so I did I did okay for a bit. Uh, but it was it was very humbling, and you know, I learned I learned a lot. And every time I go back there, I'm like, okay, just don't be. 
the weakest link. Just, you know, contribute, yeah. you know, pull your weight because uh, everybody's just amazing there. Really, really humbling. They have a killer crew, dude. Like I remember, yeah. I remember um, when I jo when I joined Captain America or the Civil yeah. War. I remember, you know, when I walked to, <laughs> to your guys's room, we actually worked a couple rooms apart. Yeah. And so um, yeah, <laughs> it was just like, holy fuck! I didn't know you got all your guys are here. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. what the hell's going on here? Uh, yeah, it was like um, quite of an experience because I I knew there's you know Anthony was there, I knew uh, Andy and um, and you know all the other guys you mentioned were there, but like yeah, there's some new ones too. Uh, yeah, I think they, I saw uh, Carla uh, over there once. Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, Doctor Strange it was amazing on Doctor Strange, and my good friend Ryan Lang. Uh, who's just a, he's a badass. Like, I learned a lot watching him uh, paint. He comes from animation, so he really knows how to Yeah, break. Ryan is a killer. He is oh my a God. killer. He's, he's just incredible. And so, it's it's like going back to school, really. Yeah. Like, it's great. And you were you were doing Civil War stuff. I saw your Civil War stuff. It's great. It was like, there's some shots that... That you did that looked like one to one from what was what was on screen. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of cool to see that quite a lot of that stuff ended up just being there and in, in the very yeah. you know I think it was because you know um, production designer on that show was Owen Patterson. I used to work with Owen <laughs> on on few projects before. I actually worked with him on the bigger one that I worked with him was. Uh, uh, Gods of Egypt, which turned out to be a oh. horrible movie. <laughs> that's the second. Well, then that's the second film we worked on together. Oh, there you go. Hey, yeah, yeah I remember because you know, you know what? I I I knew you were working in that movie. I just forgot uh, because when I was doing concepts for for Owen, I was mm -hmm. getting ZBrush files that you've created for you know those creatures. Um, one of the, oh, like, those, those guardians. Files then those were probably pretty heavy files. Yeah, I was, and that was the moment where I realized I don't want to use Moto ever, <laughs> ever again. Yeah, yeah, no way you could open that up in Moto. No. And I, I remember <laughs> I had one. It was the big bad guy at the end of the film. If anyone has seen it, um, and it's it's just it's just teeth on teeth on teeth on teeth. I yeah, forgot. Yeah, it was fucking crazy, dude. I opened that file. It's like two gig, two gig yeah. file. I'm opening no, it as like, what the fuck is going on, yeah, dude? Because no, they, they kept wanting revisions, and they're <laughs> just like, I, I didn't know. My, my understanding of ZBrush wasn't that great, so I'm just like, okay, I'll just keep I'll keep up-resing until it hurts. And uh, yeah, and then I ended up um, just keep giving me notes, and so I had to like cut into it and like more teeth, more teeth, more teeth. Like it was just the most insane thing. And um, the only thing I, I, I can say about that project is... I'm, I'm amazed at, at what made it on, on screen, meaning that uh, I'm surprised so much of it was like one-to-one -one that, that uh, it appeared that, you know, the director really got his way and he got, to, he got to put what he wanted out there. And I've never, never quite seen that before. Like usually by the time you're on screen, if you're lucky, like maybe 90% of that is yours. But that was just like... Like just everything. <laughs> yeah, it was, dude. It was crazy. Like I, I couldn't even decimate master. Like I couldn't use decimate master because it would, it would just basically crash. Oh, I yeah. remember, I remember ending up like hiding everything and then just going like sub tool by sub tool. <laughs> but yeah, eventually, I, I got it I done. Like, like I am sorry, man. I had no <laughs> idea. I didn't know you had to use those files. I didn't know anyone had to use those files. I just assumed that because um, they were telling me that that you know they liked it and that was it. And so I'm like, oh, okay, well then That's it'll crazy. just go to like ILM, you know, or something. <laughs> if they 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 have the power to open up these files because you know it would crash every time I was working on yeah. it. Well, I, I mean, should it's it's, it. it's a little better now. Um, yeah. it's, it's it's way easier. Uh, yeah. You know, ZBrush progressed as well quite quite heavily too uh yeah. it's it's yeah it's definitely it's definitely easier to, i mean it's 64 bit now so it, it doesn't just like limits you to four gigs of ram so uh that's definitely um 
definitely easier. And then yeah, I mean it, it, those were those were fun to work with though. Like I, I remember just like one, holy shit, it's so heavy. But then two, it was like, damn, this is looking this is looking pretty pretty titty, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, I'll um, stuff on that show, it was really cool stuff. Yeah, we always. I, every now and then, like I, I come across your piece, I'm like, of course Mache is on this. Of course he's on it. <laughs> So anyways, um, so that was the project I worked on with with Owen. And then he called me uh, back, you know, it was like two years later mm -hmm. for Captain America. And the the way Owen likes to work, and especially especially with me, because he likes to work with, with artists in a very different way, depending on who is who is doing what. He kind of try to tries to find the strength, uh, your strength, and then, you know, take it to the next level sort of sort of deal. Um, so I remember he used, like, he would abuse me for keyframes, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and then just translate it to what the film is, you know, and it was, it was very similar with, with, uh, Gods of Egypt, a lot of, a lot of stuff that I've created for that film was very, very similar, uh, and in, in the way of how the film looked like afterwards, and I yeah. remember even having calls from, from Owen, when he was telling, like, right way after the project was already, you know, in works, saying, like, dude, uh, the lighting looks like in your concept. So I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. So um, that is great. Yeah. I've only I've only had that a few times. I didn't I didn't realize um, because it took me it took me a while to consider lighting and atmosphere for for a long time because you know creature designers. For the most part, for years, it's just been uh, pencil and paper and you know white backgrounds. Yeah. Because like the focus that um, you used to need was just entirely on exploring the anatomy and pushing forms stuff like that. And so uh, I noticed later on when I started to do things that were more cinematic, that were lit, that were staged. Like every now and then, you'll watch the reveal of that character, and it's like, oh, that is my lighting. Like I, I got it. That, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> and it's a, uh, it's a better, it's a better feeling too, um, because you know, you know, a piece of concept art did the right job if it had that much influence. You know, so that's that's definitely to your credit. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you're right. Hold on, I'm trying to fix something here. I think I lost the mm -hmm. camera. You did. I lost the. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I did. I don't know. Let me, uh, fuck it. it. Should be fine. Um, but yeah, anyway, so if, if for me, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was like, I remember walking into that room, sort of going back to where we started, walking into that room and seeing all of you guys. I, I don't think Ryan was there back then. Um, he was there, he's working. Or maybe he was, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe in the corner somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, I remember every time we walked in, like, "Hey, we're going for lunch." And they're like, "No, no, we're we're working." <laughs> how was yeah. uh, how was working with those guys for you? I I, I know oh, it's a killer God. team, you know, and I've just heard only good stories. But I was just I would be just curious, um, uh, you know, your your own experiences with you know with the Marvel team. Uh, it's been it's been awesome. Though. I've been uh, cycling in and out of a project with them. I've now done, um, geez, I think about four, four films. I just wrapped up, uh, infinity war with them. So I was working in house with them for about a year. And, uh, well, that's number three then three and four. Yeah. Cause I think it's going to be a two parter. Um, and, um, I was, uh, mainly working. I've worked with, um, Andy, unfortunately, only briefly, because Andy's, Andy's a sweet guy. He's really, really nice. Um, and I wish I stuck around for... Uh, I started uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and then I got called mm -hmm. for Justice League, and I ended up doing that uh, instead over at Warner Brothers and over in, over in London. Um, so I almost, me and Andy almost had our, our time together, uh, but it, it, was, it was taken away by Batman. Uh, and so I've been working... Uh, with Ryan, uh, I worked with Ryan on Strange, and I've worked with Ryan on um, on Avengers, and he's 
an incredible artist. He's like, he's the top. Like I used to, I, people used to get on my case for, for working too hard. And for years, I was like, yeah, you know what, maybe, maybe I do work too hard. Maybe, maybe this is a bit extreme. Maybe I care uh, too much. And then, uh, you know, I started working with Ryan, and I'm just like, damn, I thought I, thought I cared too much. I thought I worked too hard. And Ryan, <laughs> has, uh, he just he knows that world. He's so invested, and he cares so much. Um, and so trying to trying to to make sure you do him proud you know that you're you're pulling your weight with a with a guy who you know can do your job uh really well is 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 tricky and um it is <laughs> yeah it's it's very tricky but he's he's also really uh patient he's really cool um i uh, you can pick his brain about design and uh, and process and and he's been he's been awesome. Um, yeah, no, I've I've really I've really enjoyed it. I've, I've I've learned a lot and you know the team that they they cycled in like on uh, Avengers they were doing Thor Ragnarok and um, that was that was Andy's project and he brought in a very good friend of mine Constantine Securis and uh, Tully Summers and. Ian Joyner, um, a lot of guys now. Wes Burt is over there, John Staub. And so not only is the talent, you know, good, but it's like it's like new guys. It's new, really good yeah. guys and everything. Yeah. Everybody's just insane. And you can it, – it, it was free enough. Like you could go, you could walk from screen to screen and, and you could just learn something new and valuable. It was, it was uh, incredible. Yeah. Yeah, there's something I miss about That's working it. in a studio. Um, How long have you been working from home now? It's been almost two years. Almost two really? years. Yeah. Shit. I haven't <laughs> gone to the office for two years. <laughs> uh, it's been a good run, dude. Um, I Personally, I kind of like it more when I'm home. Uh, mm -hmm. Personally, because, you know, I can just control my time, you know, a little better. I don't... I, my my wake up call for for com, for um for working in the office space was when I realized how much I'm commuting, how much yeah. it takes to get to the uh, to the studio, mm -hmm. and it was I think it can be like two hours easy. Yeah, on 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 Tron, and on Cap America because those were pretty much Disney. Yeah. Um, it was. An hour each way. Wait, where were you? Were you, were you Marina Del Rey? Yeah, West Side. Yeah, wow. West Side area. So it's it's not a horrible drive, you know. It's uh -huh. four hundred five. Four hundred five is when you get on four hundred five. It's easy. Yeah. Uh, especially in the morning, but then one hundred one is I call I I used to call it one hundred one to be devil's butthole basically, because that's yeah. the worst free. I think it's one of the worst worst freeways in in L A. Yeah, it's nerve wracking. I did. I did a ride to. Uh, I was working on um, a Fox film. I'm not gonna mention it, but um, just for for three weeks, and I was working from home. And then, you know, I do like the environment. I like going in. I like meeting with the director. I like yeah. meeting the costume designers and stuff like that. Because you you can be such a um, such a more efficient designer when you do that. Because you get the personality. You understand the tastes and you can just make better choices. Um, but it, it was a nice drive, but you just know it's only a matter of time before someone in the next car is going to slam into you. Like you just, you get that, <laughs> that feeling. It's just like any day now, you know, there's nothing yeah. special. I was lucky so far. <laughs> You're good? Had, yeah. I haven't had any, any crash just yet. Uh, my, my philosophy on the street is I don't, I don't care. Like, oh, you want to go first? Go ahead. I don't care. Yep. You know, it's no. like <laughs> screaming in the, the streaming, screaming inside of the little metal box that, and nobody can hear you anyway. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Why, why would I stress out? But I, I don't commute anymore because I've, I found out it, it takes exactly almost 40 hours a month, which is a full working week. Yeah. Just to commute. Like, oh my God, fuck that. I can make, I can make, a week week works worth worth of work instead of being in a car 
so that was that was the first thing and obviously you know and i decided like i'd rather be just close to family mm -hmm. and um and if i can make it work i'll make it work and i made it work you know it worked out pretty well uh, with i was pretty lucky because I, I think in the beginning i was pretty lucky because I, i've made like good connections by you know really pushing hard on those projects with you know with darren guilford and and with owen and then prior to that i worked with rupert sanders on the project that was cancelled which w which basically made me to be on the on the ghost in the shell project and the moment um the moment my daughter was born i just stopped commuting and mm -hmm. that was also the moment where i was back on ghost in the shell and i could work from home because they moved to new zealand as well like the whole production crew went from la to new zealand pretty much up around the same time so for me it was like a no-brainer obviously i'm gonna work from home and yeah. it worked out pretty well made a good connection there too. Well, it's been two years now right God, almost time two years flying. time's flying yeah it's, it's been two years since uh since i started on on ghost it's oh, fuck it's yeah it's like holy shit it's actually been through two years <laughs> it's been two and a half when we when we had a coffee in that um uh disney lobby <laughs> it just flies man it's, it's fucking uh, insane dude yeah it feels it's, like yesterday holy shit it's kind of scary um it makes me it, it makes me really nervous or not nervous but it makes me um question how am I spending my time? Because, you know, the job is really fun and it's, it's very cool, but everyone, I think, um, in our position and, and, you know, we've been pretty fortunate to have, have, uh, worked on some cool projects, but yeah, you know, you, you know that, you know, this is, this is an accomplishment, but it's not, and it can't be it, you know, it, what's next, what's next. And so, the, uh, the the blur that is, you know, just time slipping through your fingers uh, always makes me uh, super nervous. And um, it's so easy to be uh, distracted by, you know, these, these amazingly fun yeah. projects. You know, like when you're working on a dream, a dream project, like I have, I have all of these other goals and things I want to achieve but when I'm working on something that I loved when I was a kid I don't remember any of it I really <laughs> it's just like like I'm like ah oh, but when I was a kid I had that toy or I got to watch that cartoon and now I get to bring it to life and suddenly that that becomes a priority and um the honesty the I mean honestly what ends up happening is you know you focus on something really hard for a couple of months, it hits theaters. People love it or hate it, which happens all the time. Yeah, uh, you cannot then, be distracted by that, obviously. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then two weeks later, it's old news. Yeah, like, that's it's it. like who cares? <laughs> exactly. It's and the so, same old, same old, isn't it? I mean, yeah, regardless it, what kind of project you're working on, it's yeah. It's I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah, been there, done that, and then um, yeah, if you're if you're Lucky, maybe they love it for three weeks. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I've, I've had the uh, pleasure of working with artists uh, over the years, even when I was a kid, um, you know, surrounded by guys who'd been sculpting in practical effects mm -hmm. for, for years. And everybody's, you know, one, they told me, you know, um, don't sculpt. Don't don't bother with the clay for the most part. You know, move on. Move focus on design, uh, which was incredible advice. Um, but then you know you also see that they were there was some disappointment, and um, you see all these incredibly talented people who, in my opinion, were rock stars, like guys who created things that that blew me away when I was a kid. Yeah, and just talking about how the industry has changed and being upset about that and stuff like that. And so at, at that age, you know, I decided I'm like, okay, I'm going to get in there. I'm going to make some fun stuff, but the goal needs to be to create something independent from the, from the film industry, something that's, that's your own. And so yeah. I've been writing like crazy and pitching whenever I can just, just to keep that 
option open because like I said, this job is incredible, but do you want to be 60 and still doing it? Do you want to be 50 yeah. and still doing it? Like how much time and how much time can you do it? Like we're racehorses. Like we come in, we have to produce, we have to produce a lot. We have to be completely predictable. Um, and you know, how long can you do it? Yeah, and you have to consider the idea that, you know, 20 years from now, you're going to have kids that are just being born right now. And by the time they enter the industry, they're going to be way, way quicker and better than yourself, you know? And it's exactly. already happening when you... There's um, there's quite a few artists out there. I mean, looking at... Uh, what do you look at? ArtStation or any other site? I mean, ArtStation is the biggest one, I guess, now. Mm -hmm. you, you can tell, like, holy shit, the bar for for the entry has risen quite a lot I, I remember when i was getting in the industry uh no one could paint like what the average work is or maybe not no one but only like the top in the industry would paint the quality that you see almost every day now on our mm -hmm. station right so you already know that yeah it's it's already the bar is pretty pretty high and for those folks that have been working in the industry for a while now, what the advantage that we have in most cases is connections and experience. Yeah. And that's that's, that's it. it. I mean, technically yeah. you are probably worse than most of the new guys that are, you know, <laughs> entering the industry. Yeah. But you are replaceable. You are absolutely yes. in terms replaceable. of in terms of like your software knowledge and the quality of work that you're producing. The only difference is that you already have a track record and yeah. they can tell, all right, you're a reliable person. And, mm -hmm. um, and especially in film, pitches. it's, it's less important in games. I feel in games, it's much easier to, to land a job than in film, especially if you're young, but a good job, a solid job. Yeah. 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 But in film, it seems to me that it, it's, it's, it's one of those things that once someone trusts you and you deliver, it, it goes well from there. Obviously, yeah. you have to keep adapting and changing because, as you said, there's quite a few, and we don't have to name names. I, I, I've heard some names that were going no, there that were saying they're bitter and, and they hate the idea of, of a change. But, you know, I, I personally don't subscribe to that, you know, because I know, I know things are changing. You either adapt or die. That's That's just the reality of it. But... But yeah, like once you once you work with the director or production designer and you deliver and they know they can trust you, they are not going to risk to hire someone who maybe is better than you in technical mm -hmm. in terms of like technical aspects and maybe can draw draw like more realistically or his designs are slightly better or not, you know? Yeah, because that communication that that team is invaluable now. Right. You know? And they know, like, if they call you, we need it for tomorrow, it's going to be done for tomorrow, you know? Whereas yeah. if someone someone you don't know or you don't trust, like, am I going to risk, you know, t thousands and thousands of dollars? Because, like, if you don't deliver, then the carpenters and the other guys cannot build it. And if they cannot build it, it we're fucked. That's basically, yeah. <laughs> that's basically what it is. It's so, yeah. like, you know, tight in terms of... Um, uh, schedules versus like in games you have a little more wiggle room you know if you don't deliver it they'll, they'll figure it out not in yeah. not in that industry though so um, yeah, it's, uh, like I said like you know you're a racehorse and um, it's good it's good to be predictable it's hard to uh, it's hard on friends and family you know I mean that that can obviously take its toll um, but uh, nowadays I mean it it depends. I think, um, like personally, I've been lucky. My mom, my, my, my family, I think they, they get it. My wife gets it. I'm like, yeah. how many guys in our industry, uh, can say that, you know, like, and, um, it is, it is a, um, a constant struggle. The, the trick is to, uh, to marry a workaholic as well. And then, you know, <laughs> they're busy doing their thing. <laughs> You're busy doing your thing. Um, it's great, but I do have, I do have some ground rules just to uh, just to keep it safe. Like if I'm if I'm at a family thing, like I've already promised myself, I'm not gonna be the guy who's hurrying to go home. 
So no matter what happens, it, it's not going to be me because uh, I know that I spend an insane amount of time already doing that, already doing this job. Yeah. And, uh, you know, family has been so understanding. Um, and I don't, I don't have a kid yet. And so I can still be selfish. I still, I still get <laughs> Yes. That, you know. Trust me. Yes, you can. Yeah. It changes. It changes dramatically. As, as it should. Like that's, that's my, my thought as well. Like as soon as you, you know, have a kid, I'm like, okay, that's, these are not 100% my choices anymore. Yeah. No, nope. you, you have to adapt. You have to change the way you think. Unless mm -hmm. you want to have a kid that, that pretty much grows without one parent. Because you don't want to have that. That kind of no. sucks. Um, no, you have to be uh, way I'm more selective too. Because I've, I've seen guys in our industry with kids that don't hate them. And I'm like, oh, that's great. So it's possible. <laughs> yeah. You can do it. Yeah, you, know, you, you can do it. To, you just have to have your priorities uh, right. You have to have your pipeline down. You have to know how long something's going to take you. And you have to have that kind of control. Still learning. Still try to find it. So where do you think this this is all going, you know, in terms of, because as you said, we, we are kind of like, you know, uh, like, it is kind of like horse race, you know, oh, totally. uh, you have to hassle, especially in film, like in the games, it's easier. I, I would say it's, it's harder to, to land a job, like a really good job in games where you're like at the really fucking good studio mm -hmm. um, and you know that the project quality okay. is always going to be great. Because there is only a few. You could you could name them on a, on one hand, like the studios that are really worth a while to really, you know, put everything out of yourself towards the, towards those jobs and and really for years to come. Mm -hmm. There's not that many studios that can offer you that. You know. That's true, and I as a as a concept artist, I don't even know if I would encourage uh, people getting into the industry to do that to like started a game company and then uh, stay there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I think that um, it's a great place. Like I, I was at NCSoft for about uh, two years uh, because there was a writer's strike in Hollywood and, and all, the, <laughs> all the jobs went away. And my buddy Anthony and, and my God, the importance of uh, relationships and friends in this industry. Because you, you can approach this job in one of two ways. You can... You can be a shark, and you can you can try to grab everything that you can, um, or you and your friends can like just carry each other, and uh, it's a much healthier environment. It's a much healthier way uh, to live. And fortunately, you know, I've had I've had those friends. Um, uh, like I said, Anthony, Francisco, Constantine, um, Securus. Uh, these are guys that um, have changed the way that I I view the job, and uh, I always try to do. I always try to pay it forward whenever um, whenever I can. But um, God, I forgot the question. What was the question? Oh, what's next? <laughs> what was no, it? we were talking about so you know where this is all going, you know, and and yeah. we kind of went. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we we went about you know. I guess right. I'm fucking I don't remember what, what. No, wait, I think I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> it was uh, it's like okay, I said I said that I don't know if I if I think that a person should stay. Right. Uh, and yeah. that was and uh, the reason for that is um uh, my my goal I ironically was uh to stay. Like I, that was my understanding of the job. I'm like, okay, graduate from art center. Uh, let's get a steady job and just start paying bills and then work my way slowly up in a company. And I tried it at Legacy. Show ended. No money for me anymore. Uh, had to jump to the next studio. And so I jumped to the next studio. I told them what my rate was. They were like way too comfortable with it. They were just like, oh, that's great. Okay, sure. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> and then... <laughs> That show, that show went away, and, and then you jump to the next one, and you're like, ah, I'm going to tack five bucks more and see what happens. No problems paying that. Wow, okay. And then by the end of the first year, I ended up doubling my rate. Not out of any brilliant uh, strategy on my you're own. Just undervaluing yourself for the longest while. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard that argument before. I can't remember who exactly made it, but the worst thing you can do is stay at one company 
because what okay. base for like too long because you're basically devaluing your actual value uh whether you're okay. an artist or who, whoever you are and i think it applies to a lot of industries and i think it was a discussion about whether uh it's a good idea or if whether it looks good or, or bad on your resume if you're jumping ship almost like it's called jumping ship but really it's just changing projects you know Right. Um, and it only it only actually looks bad if you're applying to a place that wants you to have a steady that wants to hire you for an in-house position. Yeah. That's when it looks bad. And um, I don't know. I think I think it takes the power away from the artist to a degree, because what you're essentially hoping for is that this studio uh, values you enough to give you a raise in the yeah. future essentially what they end up doing is just assuming okay we got him you know and got I'm not him. Saying, <laughs> yeah, he got him. he's not going anywhere and we'll just give him cost of living for a bit and uh yeah if you jumped around um you quickly probably, realize yeah you do better that's why i like doing uh the union work i love I just love being on my own and being independent. And I think that, you know, I think we both touched on it a bit that uh, the goal of a concept artist should be over the years to have as few people between you and the actual client. Yeah. 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 I agree. It's the, just, the less it's layers, just the better. Pressure. Yeah. And you're not going to, you're not going to get there through a visual effects house. You're not going to get there through, um, you know, a practical effects house. And there, there are great visual effects houses and practical effects houses. I'm not uh, knocking that at all. And I think that they're they're um, they're wonderful. Uh, but for an artist, the goal should be to get as close to the clients as as possible. Yeah, yeah. Over the years, don't just jump into it. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, we can actually touch upon that in a moment, like how how to get there. You know, uh, I think it's a it's a recurring question, like how to get in a place where we can ask, um, like you know, we, we can get to a director and and get hired, you know, for for a film job or what that, whatever. So again, like uh, we'll get to that in a second. But I I think I, I kind of want to back, go back quickly to uh, you know what's next and you know what do you. What do you think? What do you what do you think is next? And I'm I'm gonna look at it from perspective. What's of, next for for what for me? For you and for the industry, me? like what do you feel? What, what what do you feel the industry is going to? You know, like what what is the direction or where do you think the industry is going? Uh, I want to ask you that because as you mentioned this, and this is pretty you know valid thing that I've heard myself a couple of times too. Is there's quite a bunch of like old school artists that just des mm -hmm. just decided not to care and just kind of do whatever they do and be comfortable uh -huh. and now they're like just bitter you know like yeah fuck like it's... i'm not getting jobs so I, yeah that's maybe something well, we could we could touch upon a little bit uh it's sensitive um I think... <laughs> of course <laughs> that's just that's why we're not naming names you know yeah Let's just jump into the big issue so that we can it's alienate ourselves from. Um, our I'm looking at it from the perspective of you know because I'm looking at also the audience. You know, like a lot of right. a lot of people uh, that listen to us, they are just they just literally don't know. You know, well maybe some of them do, most of them do, hopefully. But mm -hmm. it's always it's always like for me, if I had a podcast where I would have an, a guy who works in film who would say. To me directly, as you said, you kind of have to has like hustle, and and it is a it is like a horse race, and you have to be prepared for the for you know being ready to, to jump in and 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 just kill it right from the get go, yeah. uh, because then I would knew like shit, yeah, that's the expectations, and a lot of times you kind of go in and like oh it should be this and that, you get assumptions like you had assumptions about your rate. You know, fuck, yeah. like, this is, um, I'm going to ask for X, and th they're saying okay without even blinking. Like, that's something wrong, you know? Because mm -hmm. um, I feel... Are, mm -hmm. Go on, I'm sorry. I feel personally that, you know, and I'm, I've am i been pretty open about that, is you always, you, you have to progress, always. You have to yeah. move on, you have to learn, and 
you ne- you should never stop. You should never think that you're in the right spot. And it's uh, and dude, it's you're the you're the poster boy for that. <laughs> like you're learning new tricks because uh, uh, you know I've I've been settling on like okay, all right, I got this down. I got ZBrush down. I got Key Shot down, and I know my way. For <laughs> Photoshop, I'm good. And I'm just like, oh, what the hell is Marvelous Designer? Oh, god damn it! And then. I don't even know how to poly model. I don't know my way through through my or anything. And so, uh, when I think of you know artists who just attack programs, I think of you. I think of of Ash Thorpe, and uh, I know I've got to make that jump because it, it's funny in my industry. Uh, you, you're going to laugh at this. Uh, people think I'm cutting edge. I I'm not going to laugh because I know. <laughs> I <Yeah>. know. <laughs> yeah. And I'm glad they do. <laughs> I'm, I'm ecstatic that they do. Um, but I know I'm like, okay, as soon as things slow down, and you know, I'm not doing a hundred things, I got to learn another another program. This is ridiculous. And so everyone has to do it. And so um, even you know, to 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 comment on on artists who have you know buried their feet in the sand and they're not willing to move forward um you know i have to i have to acknowledge uh my own uh my own feet and i'm like damn i'm not i'm not as ahead as i as i thought now the great thing um about this industry is it's not about the tools and a lot of these artists that are upset uh say that it is the tools and no bull if you can't sculpt well in in Clay, you're not going to be able to do it well in ZBrush. And Unless you spend time and learn it, of course. Of and it's course. not really tutorials; it's just the practice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now the now ZBrush is actually so intuitive that yeah, you could actually get a bit of a foundation on that program because I, I worked with Clay for years, for like ten years, yeah. and um, you know you become a bit of a purist, and so I I, I refused ZBrush for a while. And then when I finally committed to it, I'm like, oh my god, yeah, it is, it is here to stay. There's, there's, there's no way uh, around it at all. Yeah. And for people to, you know what it is? I think it's for people to expect the industry to um, stand still uh, for them. Is is a little uh, not in what would I how would I phrase it? Not realistic. Not no. realistic at all. No. You have an industry that is been moving forward by doing the most advanced thing on every film, every new trick, any every new technology. And they're going to want the artists to do the exact same thing. As a matter of fact, where I think concept art will be going, uh, not only in the near future, I think it's, I think we're seeing a lot of it today is, you know, they're going to want character guys, creature designers uh, like myself, not only to, concept things but to create uh models that are usable yeah or like I think or ready to be to be sort of like fixed by a te- technician and yeah. then get production ready i kind of did that with ghost in the shell i can't fucking wait uh to show some of that stuff because some of the designs that i've created for that show just were i would send the file uh the cad file from fusion 360 and they would like a couple of days later i would get a production photo of that being printed out or milled Mm -hmm. all right cool yeah i guess that kind of fixes the issue of you guys not having not needing to hire someone to basically build something from the concept it's kind of already there i already did it for you it's it's already here i agree and you know like to to a point you said it's not about tools, and I agree with you. I could draw a parallel from the car industry. You know, uh, you know, every there was there were people working building cars by hand, and then machines came in and basically yeah. replaced humans. And a lot of people that's what why Detroit basically collapsed. Um, if you have a bad ma- mindset, it doesn't matter wh- whether the tools are replacing or changing and whatnot, because you can see there are people that build cars by hands and they're doing really fucking well yeah like there's this guy uh i can't remember his name uh we had him on uh on we had one of the autodesk guys um during twitch streams on learn square say audi 
No, no. He and there's a guy here in uh, I think Houtron who builds Broncos. Like he rebuilds yeah. Broncos. I can't remember his name. Uh, he was actually on um, Joe Rogan's podcast, and he mm-hmm. builds cars by hand. Something that presumably died, you know, but he made it like, a craft. It's like, like what do you mean? Like he actually sculpted the body out of clay? No, no. Like he rebuilds the Broncos. He fucking puts oh. puts together a car. Which mm-hmm. is already an old school car, but he pulled, puts it together, change like makes engine and everything like equipped with you know cutting edge technology, and all of that is built by hand. Those cars, I think, cost like two hundred thousand, but they're like a, a piece of almost like a piece of jewelry. You know, mm-hmm. it's a craft. So yeah. he made an industry that died. He took he took principles of an industry that died and made something that is an actual craft and and something that is really valuable and that exists and it's uh, it's mm-hmm. the same with art if you go on instagram there's shitload of great artists that never touched any of the 3d or even photoshop <laughs> for that matter and they're going doing great because Absolutely. they just found their niche and they they're using their you know obsession for art for that one specific thing they do whether it's you know pencils or or oil paintings and whatnot yeah. And they're selling it. They're they're they made an industry around themselves. Yeah, if you were if you were doing it well enough, then oh, absolutely, you're in demand. It reminds me of um, one of my favorite artists, uh, Simon Lee. You know, he's still yeah. working. Yeah, play. exactly. Yeah, I substituted. That guy's a fucking killer, dude. Oh, he's he's incredible and super nice, super humble. Yeah. I, I substituted. Uh, Ian Joyner, uh, really nice guy. I substituted, I, I, I did his, uh, I think it was like the last four weeks of his class. He was, his, his wife was pregnant and was giving birth to, uh, to their daughter. And so he took some time off and I did the later half of his class. And, uh, I was intimidated because Simon Lee was in there and he, but dude was learning ZBrush and, and you know, what I saw was, was incredible, but that guy may never have to use that program. You know, he's he's just so solid in clay, and yeah. um, you know the industry will will keep using him, keep utilizing someone that that amazing. And so, um, yeah, you either you either adapt or you just get so damn incredible uh, that they have no choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you, you just have to be realistic about what's going on. Yeah. You know, even if you if you decide that you don't want to adapt then you have to adapt in a different way and it's just you know uh it's just using different tools in that in those terms would be or in this case it would be social media being the, the yeah. new tool that you're learning how to use and how to build the brand that the brand not just you know the skill set but also the brand around yourself you know yeah. there's quite a lot youtube channels out there that you go on a channel and you see the artist and it's nothing special dude it's just yeah. it's just like and it's drawing too. and it's a drawing that it's it would be pretty meh mm-hmm. for like art station standards but it's like millions of views yeah. and the reason is is that person is really entertaining he mm-hmm. found he found a niche where that person can be really you know, an entertainer that happens to do art, pretty much, you know? It is about um, accessibility. I mean, I started back in, uh, let's see, after college, like I said, 2005. And um, my God, there just, it was still such a small talent pool. And then suddenly, you know, uh, concept, dot org was it or I, I can't well they were around even when i was in college i'm trying to remember the site before art station what was it uh wow it was cg hub i think cg hub that was yeah it. and remember Fuck, I, it I, just I, like, I almost forgot about them yeah and it just disappeared one day yeah because they went out with the bang <laughs> what? yeah it's just like but all my posts and all my I I love that that uh, site now now it's art station and, you know yeah I, we had an uh, interesting conversation on pre uh, if you go back on uh, we had a podcast with with Leo who is mm-hmm. uh, who's um you know uh, who who built art station with his team and yeah he to- he he said some stories about 
you know how they were starting art station and and then like one day they're getting like 20 50 calls from for an artist like you have to start now but we're not ready you better be fucking ready because <laughs> it's oh, you wow. or someone else and you know it was like yeah. days days after uh cg hub went out uh yeah they they rolled out as a beta and and the histories you know the his yeah. every now or everyone already knows what the history is it's the second yeah, yeah. biggest uh artistic website on the market yeah, and it's it's beautiful it's easy to yeah. use and you know, I'll, I'll lose hours on that damn site <laughs> i'm just like it's like oh everybody's so good is that and uh you know it keeps i think i think it just keeps me motivated you know it's like oh, i really need to work on my painting i really need to work on my sculpting I'm like oh that's a really good idea uh, and so it's it's an incredible resource, but I didn't I didn't have that. Uh, a lot of guys didn't have that um, starting out. Like I mean, I remember like I was very I was very uh, fortunate to realize that I wanted to do this uh, job and that I knew this job existed when I was uh, super young. Like uh, as soon as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out, I just I connected the dots. I'm like, someone drew that. Someone sculpted that, and someone made that happen. See, I didn't and know that at all. For really? me, it was well, like, ah, oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, ah, oh, they're eating pizza. <laughs> no, that, was, was, uh, that was me. Thinking. I didn't well, even that, think there's art <laughs> involved. I forgot how I connected the dots, but I just, I knew, I just, I just knew. I'm like, oh, that's going to be my job. That was someone's job. I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I would just, I was paying attention to puppets and special effects and just anything that I could. I could get my hands on and then you know the star wars books come out and you just you start to connect uh the dots like there were the earliest concept art books that i was aware of uh was the the, the star wars books and they were at uh barnes and noble and then aside from that it was like comic books and stuff like that but uh i was i was obsessed and so to be able to have that kind of tunnel vision was great but for the longest time no one knew what a concept artist was yeah. Like that's that's the world we grew up in. No one knew it was a job, and I was I was lucky to figure it out. And I went to uh, a school called Associates in Art, which was big in the in the valley. And Associates in Art uh, spawned everything. It was like the first of its kind, and uh, it was it was an art school uh, taught by working professionals. And I begged my parents, and they they got me some figure drawing classes and uh, some sculpting classes. And uh, a lot of schools sprang from that. This was before Noman, and, and there were there were amazing teachers. And I met uh, a lot of people who I, I still work with today from that yeah. school. Have you heard of Associates in Art? No, I remember. Um, I think you weren't here. When, when no, 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 yeah. no. Hell no. Uh, I remember Aaron was talking about it, though. Uh, Aaron Lemonic mentioning, oh. mentioning it. Couple yeah, of times. No, I don't think he was there, but he was mentioning it. Uh, it was a killer school. Uh, yeah, how crazy it. is that? When did Noman started? Do you remember? Noman was, was later. <laughs> uh, yeah, I of know. course. It was like 2000, remember. 2001. Yeah, it how fucking I mean, crazy it is where they are right now. Alex Alvarez yeah. and all the guys. I'm actually going to hit up Alex and see if his he would be down for a podcast. That would be awesome to have him here. That um, would be Remember doing uh, doing those workshops? I think that's the first time we ever uh, uh, messaged each other on uh, Facebook. But that was a couple of years ago. Um, but I remember taking the um, the DVDs from like Ryan Church and Dylan oh, yeah. Cole. But that was like back in two thousand four, two thousand five. That was like crazy. And uh, yeah. I think I was talking to Carlos Huante, uh, and he he was doing one of those DVDs early on. He said they were recording it in the garage, like in Alex's garage. It was so like so long ago. It, it wasn't really that long ago. It was like, I mean, yeah, 15 years or 17 years now. Yeah. But um, it just changes like, by leaps and bounds. Exactly. It's, it's a completely different world for, for concept art and uh, in design. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's uh, daunting. I mean, to stay uh, relevant. Like, like, I feel very, very fortunate uh, that I still get called for these shows, um, considering how large uh, the talent pool is out there. And um, 
it just makes me personally on on every show just I want to bring it. I want to I want to stay. Yeah, you have uh, to. Relevant. I want to stay valuable um, because you know damn well that uh, you're just you know you you could get swapped out pretty easily. I've seen artists uh, better than me easily replaced, and so stay on top of it, man. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, you yeah. can quickly lose the ground from under your feet in that industry if you're if you're just yeah just by standing still yeah That's just by standing still and fucking around yeah, you don't want to do that you always want to be you always want to treat every single job that you do as the best thing that you've ever done regardless yeah. whether you like it or hate it you know if you if you hate what you're doing then force yourself to love it at least for the time being because you never know what's going to happen and mm -hmm. it never pays off to be bitter it never pays off to be upset uh it's always the experiences that you learn from it you know and you never yeah. know what what can come out of it later on too well and um, also like we said i mean how long can we do this yeah so what is there to be bitter about i mean give yourself give yourself a timeline you know okay how long how long are we going to be concept artists before we are pitching our own projects before we're we're moving on to something more fulfilling where we where we're actually able to make uh, bigger choices and have a bigger influence and the only way to do that is to be to be something else I mean I've seen people in um, higher positions positions that that I've admired for years and then when I get closer to them and like oh dude we are in the same boat yeah absolutely it's just like like oh so it's not It's not 100% your call. What's on screen, yeah. and uh, you keep you keep going through it. It's like you work with you know an art director, you work with a supervisor, you work with all these people, and you're just like, oh wait, so it's not from you, and then it's done. He's like, no, it's this huge chain of command, and so that creative freedom is very hard to achieve unless it's your property unless it's something that, that that you've made and i think that uh people starting off in this industry the sooner they realize that uh the sooner they can actually be happier uh doing the job it's not your movie it's not you know in your hands the only thing that you can do is the best you can do and that's it just feel good knowing that you know i gave it 100 percent and yep. see if it makes it on screen every time i used to be upset when someone it was back in the games video games um time where i used to be upset where i would create something and it just ended up being changed like wow they changed it we such bullshit yeah. but at some point i just realized you know what at the end of the day i'm gonna have a killer concepts yeah you know really good art that i can share Whether it's going to end up on a screen or not, it doesn't really matter, you know. You, you, there were moments where I, where I realized that. Did you have yeah. like a specific moment where, for you, was like the wake up thing, where like, oh shit, it's not just me. It's it's all like hundreds of other people that are contributing to it. So it's going to end up. It it is going to be something that I'm not necessarily thinking it should be, but the mm -hmm. fact that there are hundreds of other people working on it. And it's probably the best of what could come out from that whole team. Did you yeah. have a moment where you realized that, or, or you were kind of aware of that from the get-go, personally? I would love, I would love to say I was aware of that from the get-go. I've, <laughs> I've always handled it maturely and professionally, uh, but no, no, I. Uh, it's it's very odd. Um, I it gets easier every year, but. Um, I think I think what drives a lot of artists is we're problem solvers, and so we want yeah. to solve the problem. And the proof that we solve the problem is that it's on screen. And so when it's not, and when it doesn't make it on screen, you're just like, oh, you, no matter no matter how much logic is involved, uh, it's hard to accept it. And only only recently. Um, I've, I've I've gotten better and better and better at it because it's it's this double edged uh, kind of situation. It's like, well, if I don't, in all honesty, if I don't 
try to solve the problem, if I don't try to get the design approved, yeah, then it's, I'm not really doing my job. Because the bottom line is, if I do a concept and I nail it and it's on screen, everything's going pretty smooth, right? Um, but that's so hard to control. You know, there are rewrites. There are people changing their mind all the time. So it has to be it has to be the right piece at the right time in order to get um, a concept approved. And honestly, the one thing that's really helped me um, uh, care the right amount is doing my own thing. Like, yeah. I will go home. I will work on my pitches. I will work on my stories because those are mine. And so to have something and I recommend this for everyone, that to have something that is completely yours helps to put um, the film job in perspective completely. Because yeah. you go into it, you have that, that point of comparison. It's like, okay, I'm not writing right now. I'm not the boss. They're the boss. And you're going to try to help solve that problem. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's where I am now. And that it, it it took a long time uh, to get there. It took it took a really long time to get there because you know even when you're there and like you get that that taste is like wow one to one I did that that's awesome you're you're gonna want that again you can't yeah. help it it's like this do it dopamine it. hit like oh yeah I got Double. it nailed it like, <laughs> there it is it's on screen and and everyone can see it it's the greatest and if you're feeling lucky, yeah likes it. yeah. Like holy shit! I designed that. Like, yeah, yeah you did. Yeah, you did. Congratulate, congratulate, congratulate yourself and move yeah, exactly. on. Because every two weeks, no one's gonna care. <laughs> yeah, nobody gives a shit. Two weeks later. Congrats! Um, what have you done recently? I was the same, dude. I remember. You know what? Um, back in 2008, I think, or 2007, I had I had that epiphany that that moment where I realized like oh it's not really just me here yeah, like there's yeah. so much more involved as when the moment that I became a uh, the art director and then I saw like the other side of the coin it's mm -hmm. like oh okay so it's it's like it's not that the art director that I always felt is an asshole and he's changing everything <laughs> that I want to do it's actually has to deal with all the other assholes in the company that it, think they're better than him. Yep, and it's just like, oh my god, it's just like one this one big political mess that you have to yep. sort of like meander around in order to get something through. And once you get it through, uh, you know, then it, it ends up being this or that. And if, if if it so happened that the concept artist just made something that it's really reson resonating with the idea that everyone else is agreeing on, then yeah, this is this is the moment where. It's end up being on in the game or in on the screen. Um, it's very gray. There's there's nothing nothing black and white. There's no solid answers. There's yeah, no, yeah. And all, there's no direct path to, to succeeding on this thing. And honestly, it all depends on the team you are in. You know, like if you're with the with the team of if the majority of the people that work on the project are great, like not just yeah. artists, great designer. Uh, great art, uh, great um, writers, great um, you know production designers, the great director, people that genuinely understand their craft and are hired, like just by by fucking some magical luck. There's an as assembly of of badasses that create yeah. one project, you know. Because like if you let, let's consider films in film, how many people work in the film? It's like fucking thousands, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously everything is in the hands of director, and but then you have producers that have their own ideas. They actually shell out money, and um, and they they have a say. And if you have a producer that is maybe is not the greatest, you know, visionary, that can mess up quite a few things. But oh, yeah. it, and but, it doesn't matter how good your work is. Exactly, it becomes political at that point. But yeah. what I'm trying to say is like you're gonna have projects where. Yeah, you end up being with the right people, mm -hmm. and then if if it just so happen that you're gonna push an extra mile with your designs, yeah, they're gonna end up on the screen because it's not gonna be your own personal decision. It's gonna be decision driven and influenced by everything else that is happening uh, within the team, mm -hmm. and 
And that's the moment where everything sort of like clicks and you end up with that piece that ends up to be on the screen, you know? Yeah. 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 And um, the moment I realized, I had like those two moments. The one when, when I became art director and I fucking hated that job uh, mm -hmm. because I just realized, you know, maybe it was the wrong studio for me. Maybe it was too early, but I hated it. I just hated being art director. Um, and the second one was, you know, when I started working in film and I quickly realized like, all right, I already understand how, how those things work, but, but then it's like everything is kind of the same. And this is so such such more compact and schedule driven environment that I can totally understand why something just doesn't you know cut it. Yeah. And you have to understand it's 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 a director's film. Yeah. It's a director's vision, and if if the vision aligns with what you produce, that's perfect. If not, then you just it's the only you you can only blame yourself. If you're like if you really want to be upset about that your concept didn't end up on a screen, blame yourself. You just yeah. didn't pull it. You just didn't pull the right one, I guess. Yeah. And it's and, the right. It's the right combination of things. It, it has yeah. to be. Like honestly, it's it's your two cents that uh, fits the story and fits the budget. Yeah, that's what gets a, a concept approved. Um, and just that that satisfies all of the right people. Um, and it, it's it's a hard thing to find. It, it really is. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed that actually helps me. Um, and I, I actually, I, I found this out while at Marvel, Marvel's pretty educational place, um, was that when I didn't get a concept through, it was so much easier and less painful, uh, because the concept that they did pick was pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. You know, that like, always like, helps. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, you know, cause you know, I was like, yeah, they made the right they made the right choice, and that's that's a very um, it's a very healthy uh, experience to have to to contribute to um, a pile of designs of a character. Yeah, and you know damn well that everyone, every single artist, are artists that you've admired your entire life. Yet when you don't get that design through, you're just you're just honored to have something in the pile. Like, like that's, that's yeah. it. And, um, that hurts less. I think, I think the worst, honestly, uh, that can, can be frustrating is if, how would I, how would I describe this delicately? Um, let's say you work really hard on a piece of concept art and we have all of these amazing tools now. They're incredible. You know, you have ZBrush, you have Keyshot, you've got, Moto, you've got 3D Studio Max, whatever. Um, if the client uh, cannot actually tell uh, what solid design is and sees someone who's just been spending five seconds in ZBrush, lighting it in Keyshot, and then throwing a tons of like lens flares on it. <laughs> they, I know where this is going. <laughs> the, they jump at that, and you're just like, but damn see that's that's very hard but again also completely out of your control because I, i've said it um many times you know i've studied uh concept art and painting and sculpting uh most of my life yeah uh, design most of my life and the people that you work for haven't it's 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 that it's that simple so no matter how much you are patting yourself on the back um yeah doesn't matter because good design uh, is subjective. It's 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 case by case. It's whatever that client wants the uh, design to be. It's not you know well according to my years of training. This is what good design is. They don't care. They don't care. Yeah, if, if it's a production yeah. designer or a rarely production designer, it's usually director. There are directors that are more artistically driven. And then there are mm -hmm. directors that are more story driven, and they're like, again, it depends on what exactly they want. Maybe for their film, they don't really f give a fuck if it's something if you design for a week or a day or, or or an hour. If it has proper, you know, design balances and whatnot, versus it's a bash of some fucking random things that just <laughs> happen to be rendered nicely. Like I, I've I've worked. You, I'm sure you worked for both, and oh, yeah. it's just like. 
yeah, I guess this is the expectations I'm getting. This this new product that I'm working on, the designs that I'm working for that director, he doesn't really care whether they are, you know, he cares about the the visual impact, mm-hmm. whether they are realistic or not. All right, well, if that's the goal, that that's my that's my bar. Now aim for that. If if I work with someone like Darren Guilford or if I work with Rupert Sanders, uh, the director. Um, then it's going to be completely opposite. You know, they will be very meticulous and very detail oriented and they will want to pull out the best designs out of you instead Mm -hmm. of just like some random piece of shit, you know? (coughs) Uh, (laughs) uh, But again, it's just a matter of what is, um, what is the goal, you know? And you can, I mean, we watch movies, you can tell which movies are more designed versus, story told versus you know flick oh, for i don't know for for more of a less demanding market if you will yeah and in all fairness uh i've been wrong you know i've been i've been uh mistaken i've, I've even on, on projects that i've worked on in the past i'm like oh that's not that doesn't seem to be the right choice then you finally see the film and it's just like, oh, that worked. That actually yeah, it worked. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. It looks like, sh- maybe not look like shit, but it makes yeah. sense it's bashed because everything else kind of is. And yeah, it would and be just stupid if it, if it wasn't, you know? Yeah, if it was like this clean, perfect thing. Yeah, so, I mean, um, it, it boils down to, I, I think, um, a little bit of trust. Like, you have, to, you have to trust your director. You have to trust um, uh, that he knows, you know, what, what choices to make because he's the only person there who sees the film in its entirety in his head. He knows what's what's going to work. So if you make him happy, if, if you're able to get that design through, then you've 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 done your job and that's that's where it yeah. needs to end for the most part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, dude. I think uh we had a good run here. I'm gonna jump into Fun questions. <laughs> oh, there's good questions. Yeah, a little QA. I'm gonna grab a few. Uh, it's been a lot of chat here. People chatting. <laughs> um, let's I honestly see. forgot. I just thought it was a Skype call for a second. Yeah, I just. I mean, I like to have it live because then everyone can participate. And there's yeah. there's few questions usually that happen along the way. Some some of them are great. Some of them aren't. But I usually try to read most. If not uh-huh. at all, okay. I might miss something. Actually, Andrew Harlick, my best friend, who who said he's gonna be here, is not. He decided that sandwiches are more interesting, I guess, or Tokyo <laughs> trash. So fuck that guy. <laughs> Some really good sandwiches yeah. out. There. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway, so let let's go through a couple of questions and then we will wrap it up. How about that? Sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. First question would be this. Uh, we always hear about uh, how difficult it is to get into film industry, but is there actually a way or path that might lead into working in it? Um, well, yeah, uh, there definitely is. I think uh, a lot of people don't take advantage of just being an artist and starting out. Like the first advantage uh, is your portfolio. So if doors aren't opening up, it's your portfolio first primary that that's yeah. your first issue. And we're just talking about people who have, um, access to the industry. Um, being in LA really helps. Um, it's easier but, for sure yeah, because they, they kind of know you're here and they can always call you in and see your face and have you on the meeting. And it's that, that helps. Community. It's not as necessary. Well. I would say, like, yeah, portfolio is the the, the major thing, but yeah. then it's a it's if a bonus is, to be here. Yeah. So if, if your port get your portfolio working, make sure it's it's uh, you have a portfolio geared towards the work that you want to do. So few people actually do that. They graduate from from school and they've got everything that you need to have learned. You need you know your figure drawings, your landscape painting, stuff like that, but to take a portfolio filled with foundation and try to apply for an entertainment position is, is foolhardy. You need an entertainment uh, portfolio. And, yeah. and um, so that's that's on you. So much of it is actually uh, in your control. It's actually uh, kind of comforting. 
And then seeing that you're just starting out, use it because an artist who's just starting out to a big company is an affordable artist. Yeah. So take, <laughs> take advantage of that. When I, uh, graduated from art center, I, I got on the phone, um, with uh, a good man over at, at Stan Winston's, uh, his name's Alan Scott, and uh, I was lucky to get the number. Uh, it was surprisingly easy. I just called information, <laughs> and I got the number, and I was about to graduate, and I just called up. I was like, hi, my name's Jared Morenz. I just graduated from Art Center. I love what you guys do. I've always wanted to be um, in that industry. When can I stop by and show you my portfolio? It's, it's a loaded, presumptuous uh, <laughs> But there is a ton of information in that statement. Yeah, yeah. My name, obviously, just graduated from Art Center. It meant at the very least I understood design and I could draw. Just graduated from Art Center again means I'm cheap. <laughs> uh, telling, asking when I can stop by helps to get me through the door and keeps me from being, you know, an anonymous portfolio or a PDF or email. And uh, saying that you can stop by means that you're local. So that's like it's like five things working in my favor. Of course, it was well timed. Um, I got through the door. My portfolio was solid, and I got I got the job. Um, so take advantage of it. Yeah. Use use what you have. And if those doors aren't opening up, it's probably your portfolio. Yeah, it's it's or definitely your portfolio personnel. for sure. Unless you're yeah. an absolute asshole and yeah. people know it. And by the way, film industry is one of those that if you're a dickhead, it just <laughs> spreads pretty quickly and nobody yeah. will hire you. It's one of those places where you, it's almost you have to be almost borderline pol political not to burn any bridges. It's mm -hmm. one of those industries where you don't want to quit job. You want to stay for on the project till the very end because that bur burns bridges right away too. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's like you're never gonna get hired if 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 they know that you're an asshole. Uh, to your point, though, what you said is it's it's true, and and it's interesting how you applied it. I I remember reading this book uh, called Relentless: From Good to Great to Unstoppable by Tim Glover, and he mentioned that concept, uh, you know, of of basically hustling and 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 just putting yourself, you know, up there to uh, to to be better basically you know mm -hmm. so and 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 trying to do m more than anyone else is doing like yeah. not just not just doing but adding a little extra you know yeah, it's not adding a nine more five <laughs> job yeah, it's yeah. A and the funny thing is like yeah it's like who are you going to hire a person that sort of like has a good portfolio but it's like eh, or maybe or someone who's just really trying to impress you you know it's more likely that if you're trying to impress someone, it's 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 gonna be easier for you to get that job. Um, um, yeah, I think that kind of kind of uh, says it all. I would I would only add that, yeah, like just just make sure your portfolio is solid. If you're active and you're showing your work everywhere, uh, you're gonna get noticed. If it's great, you're gonna get noticed. And if you're yeah. a good person, guess what? Like artists, other artists will notice you. And they'll, you know, if, if you end up having good friends in the industry, they'll recommend you. And that's the, like the second way to get in. Um, yeah, I know some people relationship after another, it's a domino effect. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be any success if you're going to try to contact like any of the Hollywood agencies that usually don't give a fuck. Oh yeah. No, um, no, you and can they never will get in at like, um, well, it's easier to get in at like a visual effects house or a practical right. effects house and work your way uh, up from there. But I remember someone asking like, hey, maybe I should email like the agent of this or that director. No, they, no. they will never reply. They don't, they don't give a fuck about you. If anything, you can find, like if there's a director that you really like, uh, there might, he might have a website. There might be a way to contact him or her through the website uh there are there are a few directors that do that there's a few production designers that have websites that and they have contact info and 
if your work is fucking solid, like really solid, they will reply. If if they don't reply, it means you, yeah, it's, it's you, very, you still have a, a way to go. So there's um, really no mystery to it. There's there's no yeah. There's no, it's just uh, it always comes down to portfolio. You have yep. pretty much almost full control over it. You know, and and there's if like you want tiny to things. Your- career too like let's say you've been focusing on uh just you know uh monsters all the time go home draw characters draw tons because if you're already in the industry and you want to switch directions the door's already open all you have to have is proof that you can do these things you'll eventually do them yeah um a lot is in is in your control cool uh let's get on another one um on the topic of rates, what should concept artists expect when working in-house versus freelance? I know it's been asked before, but how much should one expect when working, for example, for Werner or Fox? Uh, that varies based on portfolio. Again, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like um, my um, the best advice I could give is uh, have a friend create a friend, create, create a relationship. Um, and I've been, I've been lucky, uh, uh, find a working professional who, you know, is, um, unbiased or, you know, is, is going to steer you the right direction. Just ask him what he thinks or she thinks, uh, your worth and, um, start from there. Uh, yeah. because people's again, portfolio, people's skill level, uh, varies so much. And, and, there are rates that uh, go from. Uh, I think I think the average I read somewhere that the average rate of a concept artist is uh, in the in the uh, United States is sixty thousand a year, and um, it drastically varies based yeah. on. Time. You might be making sixty. You might be making three hundred thousand. Um, you really, might be making half a million too. I've seen those numbers too. Oh yeah. Yeah, it yeah. just depends who you are. I've yeah. seen forty thousand too, which is kind of insane. But why would you even work for forty thousand in this industry? <laughs> uh, that's great. Just don't yeah. just don't message a random guy who you know who's in film and then ask him that because that's kind of insult. Well, maybe not insulting, but why would that person answer you? You know. That's true. I've answered it a few times, um, but it depends on the person. Like I've answered it honestly, and I, I think I've insulted uh, a few <laughs> people or I, I've shocked a few people. Um, but uh, but it, it goes back to portfolio. I was very fortunate again. Concept artist. He was working uh, for years before me on on some of my my favorite projects and. Uh, he saw my portfolio. I was circulating it around practical effects houses after my time at, at Stan Winston's was over. And out of nowhere, and it un, unheard of, but yeah. he had seen my uh, work while I was uh, at Art Center at, at a show, and he remembered it. And um, he told me exactly what I was worth, and um, we've been best friends ever ever since. So... If you can, if you can find that, um, go for it. And we're all pretty damn accessible. Like you can take a class from us. You can find us uh, at conventions. Yeah. Um, and as long as you're not a terrible today, uh, we'll give you those answers. Tomorrow, actually, for. Uh, uh, the concept design workshop with my buddy uh, Travis, and every student that I've ever had, um, I've, I've always uh, given them the the option of you can contact me and mm-hmm. ask me uh, any any questions. And so there's so many um, people who are teaching nowadays that it's it's pretty simple to just take a class and and uh, build a rapport with these artists that you've. Um, admired and then eventually you can ask them whatever you need to ask them yeah yeah it's it's much easier now than it used to be for sure oh uh, yeah everything's just everyone is so accessible <laughs> it's it's ridiculous yeah or you can just join and learn squirt classes and talk to us <laughs> there you go <laughs> um 
Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Another question was somewhere here. If you're abroad and don't have an industry in your country, uh, tips on other than portfolio. PS yeah. from Brazil. So, like, what else than your portfolio? Uh, if you're like you, the let's say you're, you're in a country in which the industry just pretty much doesn't exist. Like there's, there's just not much going on there. Uh, what would you do? I would say portfolio. Like it's it's yeah. literally. Well, look, you've been there. This is this is a question for you. Yeah, I've been there, and and <laughs> and honestly, it's this. There's you look at it from the eighty twenty principle, and the eighty twenty principle means this: that twenty percent of what you do yields 80 percent like you look for the 20 percent of the things you do that yields 80 percent of the results and what that could be it's most likely it's going to be your work your actual portfolio mm -hmm. work that actually yields the best results and and then if you have a choice between trying to figure out some weird ways of communication and and you know reaching out to people and you know hustling befriending everyone you know and just becoming this sort of like a fake character that kind of talks to everyone and be i don't know what the, whatever the <laughs> fuck versus spending all that time on learning something new and and becoming better at your craft i bet you're gonna have better results if you re like really push all your chips into your portfolio because at the end of the day this industry is by majority driven uh by meritocracy it's a meritocracy industry it, it really relies on how good you are mm -hmm. if you, there's no fucking political correctness involved no politics in terms of who you are where you're from what color of skin you have whether you're male or female or transgender or whatever like nobody literally Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck whether you have uh, a diploma or not. That's Nobody true. cares about that either. You know That's what true. everyone cares about? Can I hire this guy and he, will he create the work that I need for my project? That's the only, the only sort of like value that they're looking for. Um, yeah. So if you can deliver that, just do it. You know. Yeah, and just to to add to that. Um as a as a teacher, I've I've recruited uh, a couple of artists over the years, um, and I've worked with with a couple of artists who got their green cards and and started working uh, at at a studio. Two uh, come to mind who are now uh, good friends: uh, Luca Nemolato and uh, Francesco Corvino. And these guys were good, um, but you have to work so much harder. The stakes are so much. Higher, and if you really want to, if, if you're, you're you're from a different country, you really really have to bring your game. Like there's no <laughs> there's no messing around because uh, it is, to be honest, inconvenient uh, for a lot of studios to even bother hiring you. And so if you are not uh, incredibly focused and incredibly uh, dedicated, uh, you don't have a chance um, in all in all candidness, and I've seen I've seen two artists, two two exceptional artists and exceptional people uh, do it, and it took a lot of sacrifice and um, a lot of hard work, which this job already requires. Um, but you need that much more if if you want to break in um, from a different country. It it, yeah. it takes it takes so much and. Um, Seeing that, you know, being born in Los Angeles and, uh, you know, complaining about, <laughs> about the job and it's like, ah, this sucks, that sucks. And it's like, I was born, what, five minutes away from major studios. <laughs> after, after I was born a potato farm. No, I'm joking. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so I don't complain about that anymore. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, I've, I've seen it, and it is uh, admirable. And no matter uh, what I've accomplished, no matter how far I've gotten, um, I had an advantage. Yeah. I had a very solid advantage, and I do not do not forget that every day. <laughs> uh, especially well, watching artists like, like Miche and 
my friends that I've, I've mentioned before. It's it's a tremendous advantage living five minutes away from these students. It is and it isn't because like it, it maybe it's it's like a logistical advantage, but on the other hand, then there is there have to be other uh, elements that are driving you to really become as good as you are. You know, for a person that is maybe outside of the industry, they will just try to extra harder. Um, yeah. and that's what's going to drive them to be where they are. Uh, whereas if you're just, let's say you're lucky that you're on the right, you, you, you were born on the, on the right, right patch of dirt and, and mm -hmm. you know, it's easier. Yeah, sure. Um, there's some chatter about ageism. Like I, I just gonna repeat myself again, like as clearly as I can, mm -hmm. nobody, <laughs> nobody, whether it's films games any kind of industry that requires someone to paint ap apart from maybe fine arts i don't know how it is in fine arts i'm not gonna talk about that because i've just this is not my industry mm -hmm. but in the entertainment industry and to a point i would say even in the um uh in industrial design nobody gives a fuck how old you are what kind of gender you are where are you from what age you like you know what color of your skin is what kind mm -hmm. of schools you've went through who was your mentor who you know who's your friend what kind of color of the hair you have whether you're fat or, or anorectic like literally nobody gives a shit all they care is two things your work and if you're an asshole or not <laughs> if you're an asshole it doesn't matter if your work is good but if Absolutely. your work is good and you're a normal human being, you're gonna get hired. It just yeah. doesn't matter if you're 80 or 12, or maybe 12. Would, it's, it's kind of different labor yeah. laws, but <laughs> yeah, those are problems. But I would, I would, I would agree with that. I would say that um, concept art can be pretty damn uh, fair in that in that sense because it is yeah. uh, just your portfolio. Like you said, no one cares about the degree. No one cares, um, at least I haven't seen instances where people um, care about gender or race. Uh, it is about uh, the job. And uh, I'm proud to be a part of um, an industry that, that's, that's like that. It's very, very clean. Yeah, it's, it's very straightforward. If you're good, we don't care who you are. We, you get, you're going to get hired. Yeah. Um, Obviously, if you're outside of the country, it's kind of more tricky. Then you have to be extra good, yeah. Because then, if they really want you to, like in film, it, you might have freelance. Then, like, it's just it's just more complicated. But it is still the same principle, you know. It just might need you just just might need to work a little harder to get there. Um, and I, I'm just gonna repeat this as well. If anyone is trying to tell you that you have to finish a school to work in this, tell them to fuck off. That's <laughs> that's, that's basically it. Uh, tell them to go fuck themselves, basically. Um, let's see. Let's get one, maybe one more question, and we'll wrap it up. Um, can let's see if there is an interesting one here. Actually, gonna read that one, the one I had in my in my peripheral vision. Uh, can one person be a hard surface model or a character artist and two D artist at the same time? At the same time? Yeah, of course. If you can do all yeah. those things really well, then yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, if you're, I mean, I, I'd imagine, especially if you're working at a uh, visual effects house and you've proven that you can do all of that well, uh, you would get bounced around departments. I mean, that would be one-stop yeah. shopping for, for a concept artist that had those skills. But... Uh, keep in mind that eventually the industry would put you where they need you the most. So if you are incredible at all three things, um, but they really just need you to do hard surface, you're just going to do hard surface. Like um, it would be, it would be difficult to find a job where you wouldn't get uh, typecast or pigeonholed. So, my advice uh, to anyone with all of those skills uh, would be to um, genuinely uh, consider which one of those things you are the most happy doing and focus on that. Yeah. Because 
that's what you're going to get paid to do. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't want to populate your, your portfolio with things that you're not necessarily, you know, jazzed about. You kind of mm -hmm. want to do work on things that you really like doing because you're going to get hired based on what you have. Because what you have is what they expect you can do. They will not like imagine, oh, he's doing creatures. That means he's really good at vehicles too. <laughs> yeah. Like they'll base it on what they see. Um, and that's, that's again, another example of uh, the power and the, the control you have with a solid portfolio. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I, I, I know we're trying trying here kind of blanket statements saying like it's all your portfolio, portfolio, portfolio. There's obviously like small things that can accelerate that process, you know, like, you know, having a good connections and building those yeah. connections. All of those things will accelerate. But if you're asking this question, that means you're, you're you know, I, I'm guessing. I'm not judging. I'm guessing. If you're asking a question how to get in the industry, that means you're not in the industry yet. If you're not in the industry yet, that means that your work is probably not standing out from the loo of fucking, you know, the army of other work that you see everywhere. And if you can manage to stand out, then any other things that you're trying to focus on, such as figuring out if I gonna get noticed if your work is good right. my matter of fact my felt my first film work was based on some some tumblr repost that someone did and one of the production designers found it in the concept intriguing asked the assistant who i and that's for work work you can actually be a it, it's it is. it's romantic I think, so I think they lost thing. us your camera maybe that's gonna help Mike how do I do that like on Skype you can kill oh your so is it yeah there's something with my connection going on that just basically drops the stream Maybe that's oh, gonna that's help. Cool. It's it's weird. Um, I had that's I had some connectivity. This from, um, maybe you guys can help. Like go on my Patreon and start start supporting it, and I can rent a studio with proper connection. <laughs> 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 that would be nice. Um, but anyways, yeah, I've, I, I we kind of lost you somewhere in the middle. It's it's fine. I think uh, we can wrap it up here, man. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to go back to uh, what you were saying. I mean, you were saying interesting things, but... <laughs> Thank you. I'm um, sure it, at, a, at one point, it's just going to be very redundant because we're going to keep getting questions and the answer will always be work on your portfolio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. That's, that's where we are. Yeah. I promise that if you subscribe to uh, the Patreon for Art Cafe, I'm not going to get that Bugatti. Although I will. <laughs> At least you're honest. At least I'm honest. All right, guys. Uh, let's wrap it up here. Um, we went for a pretty good run with this uh, podcast today. Dude, awesome having you. Awesome to actually catch up with you, too. We haven't, yeah. we haven't talked in a while now. And it's kind of crazy that we've been working together. on the, Actually, on the we've been on the new Avengers, although I was working uh, from home for a couple of weeks. So that's kind of another one that we work together on. So, um, but anyways, uh, it was it was really nice to catch up with you, man. Um, yeah, we really sure. started. Everything's kind of working out for you now, huh? Yeah, no complaints. It's been it's been pretty cool. I'm just starting my stint on uh, on working from home. We'll see if uh, if I love it or if uh, the walls start <laughs> caving in on me. Uh, start, I, you kind of you kind of do that already, right? I mean, every now and then, at least I would hope. Yeah, yeah. I've just I've been used to going in house now for like two years, and so being home takes a bit of adjustment. And so I'm probably gonna have to pick your brain a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's one rule: if you close your office door, your your home office door, it's almost like you don't exist. Like that is the easiest rule to set up with everything. Oh, I don't have to. Like, well, like oh, what for for the people that you live with? Yeah, yeah. 
That's the only that's rule the rule. If you need. Yeah. It's like when the red light is on, I, I don't exist. Yeah, exactly. Oh, maybe I'll get a red light. Uh, I just closed my door. It's a rule. The door closed. I'm not. I'm not here unless there's an emergency. And it's, yeah, I can. It can, It's a separate. To- it's a separate topic. By the way, let's not get. <laughs> let's not get into that. Maybe another time. All, All right, right. Dave, let's wrap it up here. Thanks. Thanks for your time, man. It was really nice to catch Thank up you. with you. It was a lot of fun, man. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Awesome. And thanks for everyone who joined us uh, watching this. Uh, until the next time. Peace. Awesome. See ya.